Okay guys, so today we're going to change out our DEF fluid in uh, my 2014 Laramie with the Cummins engine. And it may or may not need it. It went through last summer. Uh, when you look at uh, the specs on this stuff, and we're going to go through this in a separate video because it make this video too long. But uh, this stuff, once it gets above 95 degrees, you're down to possibly less than six months life on this stuff. So in the north, you probably don't have anything to worry about, but in the south, uh, you probably uh, need to watch that, especially if your truck is sitting out in the sun. Uh, my, my truck had been to uh, 112 degrees last summer, and uh, some of it is new, some of it's old, but I'm just going to do it because I really want to. And uh, actually, dilution is a solution, as we used to say. But uh, in other words, if you keep adding it, then you're diluting anything that's old and you're using. And of course, if you're using your truck enough, you don't have anything to worry about. But in my case, I use my truck mostly for towing my camper and, and some grocery getting too. But it uses so little that... Uh, you know, it's just, it, it, it's, it can last a very long time if you don't really drive a lot. And, uh, in, and, and that's my case. Like I said, if you don't want to bother with the video that uh, tells you more about DEF than you want to know, uh, there's two things you need to look for on any, or one thing actually, on any DEF fluid that you buy. Regardless of the brand, it doesn't matter. Uh, actually the date code too so that, I guess that would be two things but the API has said that if our emblem is on the diesel exhaust fluid and it says certified diesel exhaust fluid then we will we also certify that it meets ISO 22241 and the API is the people that steward this stuff so they should know now the other thing you're going to want to look at is the, uh, the date code. So really all you got to worry about, and what I'm saying worry about, is if you want to know when it was made and that you're getting the freshest uh, material, the freshest uh, uh, DEF fluid, this code is going to be the same on every container regardless of the manufacturer. Whether it's Walmart brand, Peak, doesn't matter, you're going to have the same uh, protocol let's call it for your date right here and that's just the way they do it if it's a drum it's going to be on the top but it's going to be in the same format you're going to have the the number here for the location and then you're going to have the batch back here the particular batch and the date that it was made you take one year off of this which would be 18 and then 320 represents the number of days left in the year from the date that it was made. So 365 days in a year, right? So this was made 45 days into 2018, which would roughly put us around February 15th, right? So this stuff is about uh, one month old. So that's the way you you do the dates. Here's another example. And this was right next to the box that I bought. This was made in 2017 with 45 days left in the year. So that was made back in November. So it's been sitting somewhere for about five months. So you've already eaten up about five months of your shelf life. Here's some AutoZone. This could very well be the same stuff that Peak puts out. It's made at the same location, 12. Notice the date on this one, 19. So it's actually 2018 with 319 days in, left in the year. So that puts it in what, uh, February? And uh, that's pretty fresh stuff. That's only about a month old. But it pays to check it. 
and I called Peak just to confirm that I'm giving you accurate information on this. Notice it's AutoZone, but the the uh, method of this uh, coding is the same. Why they do this, I don't know. It's it's why why not just put the damn date on it, right? It's called the reverse Julian method. Uh, for what that's worth, I, I don't I don't understand it. This stuff back here is the batch. If I had to guess, I would think that this stuff is exactly what's in the peak for about seven or eight dollars difference in the price of the jug. Um, it's also got the API, as you can see down here, and it's on the back of it, it's got the ISO number. So uh, I wouldn't hesitate to put this stuff in my truck. So let's go on out to the truck and start this process. Okay guys, we're going to drain the DEF fluid from this tank here. This is the drain line that comes from the fill tube. I have tried every which way I can to get a siphon hose in here and it just won't go. Everything from quarter inch on up to half inch. And I've cut a taper mule shoe in the bottom of it, everything, rolled it around. There's just some restriction in there that won't let me do it. So the only way to do it is to uh, remove this connection right here. I think I can get it off without pulling the, the vent. There you go. Okay. So you don't have to pull the vent line. Can you see the vent line up on top? Uh, you can't with my hand in the way, can you? The vent line's right up here, right there. You don't have to pull it. Let me shine a light up there if you can see it. See the vent? Kind of hard to see, but right here. That's the vent. It's same connection, just a smaller connection. But I made this little siphon hose, and I'll show you this after. You see, it's 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 a bulb like a like a boat primer. You can buy those just the bulb itself at uh, I got mine at uh, AutoZone yesterday. So let's see if we get some fluid coming out. There we go. Okay, we got a siphon going now. So we're just gonna wait on it, and then we'll. Uh, See what we get out, put the clamp back on, fill it back up with, uh, I've got some peak. And see the tank is only, it's just a little tank, five gallons. So, okay. I'll show you my siphon hose. As it turns out, it's probably too long because I was planning on using this siphon hose to go from the top. But save yourself a lot of trouble and don't even try it from the top. Through the fill nozzle, it ain't gonna happen. I tried for over an hour, I tried with a little quarter inch. I tried with one that was so flexible it was like a rubber band. I tried with one stiff. This stuff is a 3 8 ID half inch OD and it's from Lowe's. But as you can see, geez, you got enough room here to damn near put a 3 quarter inch uh, hose in there, garden hose or whatever. So I'm just going to wipe this down a little bit with a lint free cloth. What the hell is a lint? free cloth anyway. I mean, does anybody know? I've heard of it all my life, but I'm, I just don't know what it is. Okay, so we put it in, put it on. Let me see if I can do it. I want you to be able to see this. There you go. You heard it snap. That's all there is to it. 
So you, you squeeze them and kind of, if you rotate it, it kind of breaks the friction is what I did. I, I, I actually rotated it clockwise, like you'd be tightening something, but that's what I did. And then I, and then I pulled at the same time while I was squeezing these tabs. So, tank should be empty. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and pull all our mess out of here. We'll take a look at the fluid and then we'll add some fluid and uh, we'll go from there. This plate, that's where the pump is. You'd pull this bolt, pull this other bolt, and the pump is uh, right there. So, there it is. So we'll come on out now and uh, see what we got in the pan. I think there's about I'm guessing, but there's probably about two and a half gallons, maybe. Pretty good bit. Oh, by the way, any any siphon hose will do, but uh, this this is the one I used. Uh, I made it, like I said, out of some hose from uh, Lowe's. This was half, half inch OD 3 8 ID. We're going to go ahead and put this two and a half gallons in right now. Boy, you can hear it hitting rock bottom. Can you hear that? It was, it's empty, all right. About the same spot I was in, a little bit more maybe. But uh, I think that got most of it. So anyway, that will conclude our video. Until next time, thanks for watching and adios.